is Maria out with Four Season Foraging, and today I'm teaching you about Hawthorne. <laughs> um, but before I get into it, please, you know, do all the YouTube things, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell for notifications. It really helps me out, and I would really appreciate it. Um, so, today, talking about Hawthorne, which is this large shrub slash small tree growing next to me here. Um, might be a little hard to distinguish the two. There's actually two trees growing right here. Um, the one on this side is a uh, willow of some kind. Um, it's really hard to tell willows apart. <laughs> For anyone who has studied dendrology or botany or trees, like, yeah, that's tricky. Um, but this little one on the side here closest to me is the hawthorn. So you can probably see the small trunk here. It's just, just a small kind of reddish single trunk. And it's not a very large tree. This one is maybe 10 feet tall or so. And this is usually around the size I see them. Um, so what is hawthorn? Hawthorn is a native shrub that grows in Minnesota. It's native to North America. It has a wide range across the US and North America. And it's a very variable shrub. And the reason for that is that hawthorn is um, has many, many different species. So hawthorn, the genus is Crataegus. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, <laughs> and within the Crataegus genus, there's like, I think hundreds of different species that grow in the US. So distinguishing between those is really tricky and something I don't bother doing if you're like really into botany or something, you could definitely do that. But for edible purposes, all that really matters is the taste. So for that, you can just do taste testing. Um, and the way you identify hawthorn, well, first of all, you'll find it growing a lot in cities, landscapes, parks. It's a popular cultivated species. Um, so it is, like I said, native and you will find it in the wild. And it likes open areas, um, so like fields, uh, old pastures, um, old homesteads, areas along like rivers or creeks that are open. And in the city, you'll usually find it like planted along, you know, sidewalks like this or in parks or in people's yards. And the way that you distinguish it is, well, first of all, let's talk about the form. So like I said, it's a pretty small tree slash large shrub um, and the form is really dense so if you look at like all the twigs and branches and how they like interweave and overlap they're like really tight and dense in there so if you imagine like trying to throw a tennis ball between there or something it would just like bounce back at you <laughs> I mean if you threw it really hard it would go through but it would be hard to fit in between the spaces because there's not very big spaces between all of the branches and twigs. So that's one characteristic. Um, another, if we look at the bark again, it's horizontally flaking. Um, as it gets older, it can be more of like a furrowed bark, but you know, for this one, it's more of a flaky bark. And then we have all the things that are on the tree. So the leaves. The leaves are alternately spaced on the tree and they are serrated and the leaves are variable. So depending on the species, the leaf can have the shape more like a oak leaf, like it can be lobed like that, or it can, you know, look more like this, just this like a uh, simple oval shape, or it can be a little more triangular, but it's always going to be serrated and always going to be alternate on the tree. Um, and then we have the fruits on here. So unfortunately, this tree isn't a great example of the fruits. A lot of them are like dead or have some kind of uh, fungal disease or something. But I did find one within reach that I could show you. So the fruits are red when ripe. And they have this little five pointed star at the bottom. This is the calyx or the sepals. Um, and you'll recognize that from like apples have this, pears have this, June berries, um, lots of things in the rose family have this five-pointed star at the bottom. 
So that's a characteristic. Um, it also often has these little like whitish dots on the fruit and the size of the fruit is variable. So this one is maybe like a half inch across. Sometimes you'll find a more like an inch across. It just depends on the species. Um, and yeah, they come out this time of year, the fruits come out in the fall and often they'll stay on the tree through the winter. It kind of depends on like, you know, how many of the birds are eating and what the year was like and how many were produced in the first place. But oftentimes you can find it through the winter. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about the flowers. So the flowers come out in spring, like usually May, and they're five petaled. They're usually white, but they can have a pink tinge or depending like if it's a cultivated species, it might be like really, really pink. Um, and, but they're always five petaled and they're always like really showy. Like when you're, you know, you could be like driving by and be like 50 feet away or something and just like see this big blush of white and know that it's definitely something in the rose family, you know, it could be a Juneberry or a cherry or a plum or a crab apple or a hawthorn, but probably something edible. So in the springtime when you're out looking for wild foods, uh, keep an eye out for the really showy flowered shrubs and small trees because those are probably an edible species that will produce edible fruits later in the year. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention about identification was the winter buds. So the buds on Hawthorne are small and circular. They're spherical, I should say. And they're almost, they're like very rounded. They're almost a sphere. And this is a good identification feature to tell it apart from crab apple. Uh, the thing that you're most likely to confuse with Hawthorne is crab apple. And that's not a huge deal because they're both edible and they have similar tastes. But if you want to make sure you're getting the right thing, then the winter buds are a good thing to look at because while these are spherical or rounded, those of crab apple are going to be pointed and like longer in shape, kind of like a little arrow. Another way to tell apart the crab apple from the hawthorn is that crab apples don't have the same really dense shape. Um, they'll be like, like the trunk and the bark will look similar and they'll be like a similar size. But uh, <laughs> I was actually remembering um, when I was learning how to prune apple trees, the person teaching me said that you should be able to throw a cat through the branches. Like that's about the level you want to prune it to. Um, obviously said that jokingly, he like owned cats and loves cats. If you look at this tree here, there's no way you're going to get a cat through these branches, right? Like I was saying, like a tennis ball would be hard to get through. Um, whereas with crab apple, if you look at the growth form of the branches and the twigs, there is a lot more spacing there. So that's part of what makes this shrub hawthorn so popular for hedgerows. Um, basically, you know, serving as a barrier uh, at the edge of pastures or between property lines um, is a really dense growth form. Another thing is, which I haven't mentioned yet, is the thorns. Um, so with the name Hawthorne, <laughs> you'd assume there's thorns on it, right? And there almost always is, uh, in the wild especially. I've never seen one without thorns, they're always thorny. But in the city, they've been cultivated not to have thorns. So I very rarely see a thorned Hawthorne in the city. Um, but if you see a, something that looks crabapple-like, but it has thorns on it, crabapples never have thorns, so it's definitely a hawthorn. The last difference is the fruit. So the fruit of crabapple is very variable, just like that of hawthorn is. So crabapples can be around this size. They can be, you know, like an inch wide, even like an inch and a half. Um, but the main difference I see is that with hawthorn, I always see the sepals on the bottom, this little five-pointed star is always on hawthorn fruits that I've seen anyway. Um, I mean, there's a chance that it falls off sometimes, but with crab apple, I often see it where none of the fruits on the tree have a sepal. <laughs>
so they'll look very similar to this but they won't have this little like leafy star on the bottom um that almost certainly is a crab apple when you see one that looks like that um yeah so that's all the identification tips so i just wanted to show a close-up of this little guy here you can see those white spots I was talking about. And then on the bottom, here's that five pointed star. It's a little hard to make out because it's a little like rotten on the edge, but you get the idea. So I wanted to show you examples of the variability among hawthorn leaves. So here you have two hawthorns growing right next to each other. Um, and this is right next to the highway, so sorry if there's a lot of background noise. But uh, you can see that these here are lobed hawthorn leaves. So when I say lobed, like maple leaves are lobed, oak leaves are lobed. Um, it basically means it's a divided leaf. And yeah, you can see here that it looks kind of similar to an oak leaf but it's obviously much smaller and chunkier in appearance. Um, whereas you can also get leaves like these that are unlobed. Um, you'll notice that there are some similarities, like both are serrated. You can see the serrations on the edge here, as well as the serrations here. But obviously this one is more of an oak leaf in appearance and this is more like a diamond slash oval shape. So there is quite a lot of variability between the species. And like I was saying, you don't usually find thorns on the species that grow in the city because they've been um, cultivated to not have thorns, but this one actually does have thorns on it. So. Here's some examples of what the thorns look like. They do get quite large and barbed and <laughs> pointy. Um, I guess barbed isn't the right word. Barbed is like a fish hook, but these are, you know, large and pointy and they come out from the leaf axles. So where the leaf stem meets the twig. Whereas these here are completely smooth. But again, here are those uh, telltale buds that I was talking about, just these little rounded, almost spherical buds. And they are the same, or maybe not exactly the same, but they're very similar across species. So this one here has the little rounded buds as well. All right, so I just wanted to show you for comparison really quick. This here is a crab apple tree. And you can see it has a similar growth form, the berries, or not technically berries, but the fruits look similar from a distance. Um, and I'll do a pan of the whole tree so you can see the whole growth form better, but you can probably immediately tell that the branching is much more open. It's not as dense as that of Hawthorne. And then I will also show you a close up of the winter buds so that you can see the difference with that. Okay, so here's the form of the whole tree starting with the trunk and then going up to the branches. You can see all the spacing in between the branches there. And then go closer to these fruits here. This lighting's kind of bad, sorry. <laughs> but if you look at it, you can see there's no sepal on the bottom. And it also doesn't have any of those little spots. And this time of year, crab apples get very tasty and ooey gooey. Look at that. Yum. Here are the buds of crab apple. You can see they're pointed and long, and not spherical or rounded at all, like those of hawthorn are. Okay, so here's another view of a hawthorn, and this one is just growing singly, so you get a much better idea of the growth form. You can really see that density I was talking about and the whole thing with 
not being able to throw a cat through the branches. <laughs> um, so yeah, you get a really good picture of that. And this one has a lot of fruit on it. So you can kind of see what that looks like and how it typically looks this time of year. Usually I find them with fruit on them still, even in November. So how do you use hawthorn? Well, it's both edible and medicinal. And the part that you eat is probably obviously the berries. Um, and typically you wanna get them around this time of year uh, after it's frosted because that often improves the flavor of them. Um, like I said, there are a lot of different varieties of hawthorn and they're not always gonna be good. <laughs> um, even after the frost, um, the frost kind of helps sweeten the flavor, but sometimes they're just always mealy and bland and gross. Um, and those ones you just don't want to eat, <laughs> right? Uh, but sometimes they're like pretty sweet and you know have a nice tartness and juiciness and taste more like crab apples. And those are really great and the ones that you want. So definitely I recommend uh, taste testing while you pick to make sure that you're not coming home with a bunch of inedible fruit, right? Um, and so once you take it home, you have a few options. Uh, it's pretty popular to make like jelly or jam from them. Uh, you can do like a sauce or a syrup. Uh, I recently saw a recipe for fruit leather made with hawthorn. So I want to try that. That sounds really good. Um, you can also just throw it in tea and it is medicinal. Like I said, it's a heart medicine. So if you're someone who has heart problems or who takes other heart medicines, uh, you might want to check with your doctor before eating a significant amount of these, but for most people, they should be fine. So for medicinal purposes, it's the berries that are used, but also the flowers, which I mentioned come out in spring, and even the leaves and the twigs are used, and those are made into a tea or a tincture and taken as heart medicine. Um, and when I say heart medicine, I mean like literal physical heart medicine, as well as kind of your emotional heart. Like it can be a comforting tea or something that, you know, helps reduce your anxiety, helps alleviate sadness. So uh, it can be used for, you know, emotional problems as well. So I wanted to get a little closer here so I could try some of these fruits. Um, like I said, it's a variable species. Um, you do want to taste it if you're going to harvest any significant amount just to make sure it's something you like. Uh, this one's actually all right. Um, so this one's pretty juicy. It is tart. There's very little sweetness in this, but it tastes more like a crab apple. Um, and it's got some of that crunchiness too that apples and crab apples do. Yeah, it's pretty good. I would, I would eat that. I would turn that into a jelly or a fruit leather or something. We definitely want to add sugar to it first, but not bad. Um, yeah, I've definitely had some of them where it's just like, think of like the worst mealy, dry, bland apple you can imagine and magnify that by like a hundred and that's what it tasted like. <laughs> um, so obviously you don't want to eat them if they're like that, but uh, if they're a little palatable, you know, something that could be improved with sugar or spices or um, by being made into a jelly or sauce or something like that, then definitely pick it. All right, that concludes my video about Hawthorn. I hope that you found it enjoyable and learned a few things along the way. Uh, if you have a minute, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have a few dollars a month just laying around, you can join me on Patreon. Um, pledges start at a dollar a month. You get some cool benefits and you help me keep producing these free videos for everyone. So thank you very much for watching and happy foraging.